Hey everybody, welcome back to Super V World. I'm Clayton. Uh, this is my car behind me here and it is on jack stands. So today's topic is jack stands. If you're going to do anything serious on your car, taking the engine out, gearbox out, pretty much anything that's not to do with the interior, you're going to need to use jack stands of some sort. Not all jack stands are made the same. So I made my own. Here they are behind me. They were reasonably easy to make. You just need a MIG welder and a bit of time and a lot of steel. But this is the only way to get your car up high enough to get the gearbox out and do it without buying a hoist. Um, other people might do it with other jack stands, but in my opinion, those aren't high enough. You're gonna struggle. It's not good enough, but these ones here, they definitely get up high enough for you to do anything you need to do underneath the car. You can nearly sit up under there, so let's take a look how it was done. Okay, here's a breakdown of my axle stands. Just made them in here. First of all, I went to the steel shop and I bought 3 mil thick mild steel plates. 2.4 by 1.2, big sheets and I sliced them up just with the little wee angle grinder with a cutting wheel on it. Didn't take long at all. I sliced them into 400 by 400 square and then put these on here. This here is three mil wall thickness, mild steel tube. It's 42 mil by memory. And I cut those into 300 lengths, 300 millimeter lengths. Uh, I just cut 16 of those straight out of the bat and then just get some tiny little angle iron. This is 25 by 25 angle iron and you just want to brace, brace, brace. Three sides so the jack can enter into that side. You probably could put a brace across that side as well and the jack would still get in because the jack only really goes up through the middle. A trolley jack, the arm does lift up, but it usually does miss, to be honest. I put, could have put four on there if you wanted more strength. Then you build the other part here. Let's work the jack. This is the top to it. So this one here, if I spin this around, again it uses the same three mil wall thickness mild steel. Again, 400 by 400. And then I found pipes that would fit inside the 42 mil. Now to do that, because I had three mil wall thickness, I had to find something that would fit properly. So these ones here, I found exactly fit inside there. It's 35 mil, but the wall thickness on this was really quite thin. And I wanted this to be as robust as possible. So I found uh, two mil wall thickness um, uh, square tube and I have put that into each one of these legs just to make it really durable so uh, I've just welded them into the end there so there's square tube inside the round tube really nice and strong the bottom here where the wheel sits on so the wheel sits on the top of this bit here you're gonna brace this through here this is just straight um, uh, bar mild steel bar it's 25 mil uh, by I think five mil and I've just done a, a crisscross brace like that and it'll hold it nice and tight Then you simply put them together. So this drops into that so it can double the size. Let's have a look Put the brace on, so. Down she drops. Lift this. Oh, they're not that heavy, but a little bit. And then it will double in size. So you've got 300, and you can get another 200 on top of that. So that there, you got 500 mil to the top here from the ground. So that even elevates more. That's to the wheel height. So once you get underneath the car, you've got 600 mil to the side skirt, you've got 650. So you're three quarters of a meter above the ground to get underneath your car. It's really quite decent. And you, it's definitely enough to pull a gearbox out comfortably without having a hoist in your garage. I couldn't quite get a hoist in here. I wanted to, believe me, but it would have hit the roof. 
So this is my home garage, it's just underneath my house. And this is my setup that I've put in here. Absolutely love it, I couldn't do without it. This is an absolute necessity. Above anything else in the garage, this is the thing that you absolutely have to have or you just can't work on the cars properly. But I've done all this now and now I get to enjoy it and make videos of it. All right. <laughs> for you now you got two minutes of my time and i don't really break too easily but i'm worth it cause i'll slip into your dreams tonight oh so give me so give me your all i'll take it i'll take it to mars oh i'll stick like glue inside your mind just watch me break it oh it's so hot here summertime in australia so I'm going to drive it down the ramps now. It's not that easy to get down the ramps because it has a twin plate clutch. Uh, so I take it nice and slow and see how it's done. Better safe than sorry. I put jack stands underneath the ramps as well. It doesn't need them, but better safe than sorry. Any safety is good safety. Because my garage is on a lean, I have to put two ramps on this side. It's a real pain in the butt. what you're left with two ramps in the middle of nowhere now obviously you don't want these things taking up room the whole time because you want to put your cars back in here without them being on the ramps so basically they just bolt on at the bottom here look all we do is whip those four bolts undone and you simply take them off put them on the side let's do that in time sound of this freaking two-way dip. Okay, that's all from me right now. Please subscribe to my channel. I promise I don't live in this garage. So there will be videos of me driving cars actually on the road or on the track, but please subscribe. It'll really help me out. I'm gonna try and get the Supra in here now. It has a blown clutch, but I think it can get onto here. Getting it up the ramps though is gonna be a different story. I'll see how I go. Anyway, from me, see you later. Supra V World, please subscribe. See you next time.